as you know, the rates of ADHD and autism have been going up every year. Yeah. When I was a medical student, it was one in 10,000. Wow. Yeah. And now it's one in 52, and we're saying we've missed it. Yeah. I mean, you have to. I mean, as we know, physicians in the previous century were much better clinicians. Mm -hmm. So you, someone did the calculations to be like 300 million kids were missed yeah. before the first case of autism by Leo Kanner, a uh, psychiatrist at Hopkins, published 11 cases in 1943 that he had seen. Interestingly, four or five of those parents of the kids were professionals who worked with mercury mm -hmm. fungicides. So it's like, how do you collect these the nuts, Mike, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. to, to us, it's pretty obvious, like something's going on here. Right, right. <laughs> What's so, your experience with that? I mean, that's... Well, just to clarify what I hear you saying, it's not that we're better at diagnosing it. The prevalence is increasing right. without a doubt. Yeah, the best studies would say, um, and I can show you those, been about three in the past five years, that about one third of the increases of, of diagnosis might be uh, more awareness and diagnostic sure. substitution. But clearly, two thirds is a real increase. Mm -hmm. And in just in the past three years, if you look at the studies, associations of autism with moms taking antidepressants during pregnancy, moms taking Tylenol during pregnancy, living near freeways, uh, using on your dog, uh, using flea shampoos during second trimester. Mm -hmm. uh, very good studies in California. Moms who live within two thirds of a mile of the agricultural fields with the highest poundage. Oh. Pesticides had more than a double risk of having autism during their exposure in second trimester. Uh, San Francisco's measured air pollution levels here at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, just another study showing air pollution correlated. So it's getting to be a long list. And this is the challenge because it's not a one-size-fits-all diagnosis. For one kid, it could be five things that's affecting them that's affected their neurodevelopment, probably in utero. For another kid, it could be five different things. For another kid, it could be five different things. So it's not going to be the single variable placebo-controlled double-blind study. Right. It just won't work that way. Right. Yeah, multifactorial.